South Bend neighborhood, but we still don't know why that private jet went down. Now, the pilot and co-pilot died. Two passengers survived. Two women lost their homes. WSBT's Kelly Stopsinski looked into it, and Kelly, everyone involved is dealing with a lot of red tape. Well, to start, Rick, there's a massive lawsuit. Some people affected by the crash claim parts of that Hawker Beechcraft jet were defective. And that's what they say caused the plane to go down. But that suit is stuck until the National Transportation Safety Board's investigation is done. And I found out it's nowhere close. Uh, we've lost all power and we have no hydraulic. And I happen to look up and I see this plane coming toward me. Is your craft uh, controllable? Uh, barely controllable. She jumped up, she said, look, there's a... Six Delta Kilo, go around, you have no gear. Six Delta Kilo, if you can hear me, and go around. And a big boom. And that about jumped, we, our feet just jumped right off the floor. It was such a loud noise. My whole basement shook. Just like that, this quiet South Bend neighborhood changed forever. I couldn't believe what I saw. There's, there's no way that you could actually mentally prepare for to see something like that. South Bend Police Division Chief Scott Roskowski was one of the first to get there. There's no way this could be happening, not here, not, not in our city. But it was. Through their shock, Roskowski and dozens of other officers and firefighters got to work, checking the plane for survivors, evacuating more than 60 nearby homes because of a jet fuel leak. The first night itself was, I think it was 25 or 26 hours um, that I, I didn't leave here. I mean, uh, this is my old stomping grounds, you know, when I was a kid, just kind of uh, a, a little closer to home, if you will. Um, I grew up with a lot of kids that, uh, you know, I went to school with here in this neighborhood, so it was, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, a special place for me, I guess. Iowa Street is special to a lot of people. Frank Soika built his house in the 50s, along with Stan and Mary Jane Kleber. Their kids grew up here. Everyone knows their neighbors. It's just kind of a homey place. March 17th. 2013. I was in the, in the north bedroom and I clipped the roof on this end of the house. I just heard a dull thud and I came out and looked and I could see daylight you know, through, through the roof. Diana McEwen lived next door. That's where a bulk of the plane ended up. After firefighters pulled her out, she spent two days in the hospital. Next door to Diana, Patty Kabalski and her six-year-old son, Dominic. The nose of the jet landed in their house. The startling thing was to see that plane just jammed into that house, and that little kid was eight feet away, and all he had was a scratch. Physically, they were OK. No one on the ground lost their life, but they lost their livelihood in that regard, and they lost a lot of their life's belongings. Within 48 hours, the NTSB removed the plane, then turned the properties over to the city for demolition. The city filled the holes with dirt, but two garages still stand. They tried to break part of her garage door, and they didn't get in. You can see they tried to open the top panel. Kowalski's car, the same place it was when the plane hit. Bruce Strenitz says he chases away scrappers and thieves all the time. She said she's missing a lawnmower. I'm not sure what else. For now, these semi-empty lots are caught in legal limbo. McEwen and Kabalski are suing the plane manufacturer and company that owned it for money to cover everything they lost. Jim Rogers is a Tulsa, Oklahoma man who was a passenger on the plane and is also suing. Rogers' attorney tells me he suffered a serious brain injury in the crash and is bedridden. And because of that, he says Rogers will never be able to drive a car or work again. Roger's son-in-law was also a passenger on the plane and is suing too. But until the NTSB figures out what went wrong, the case cannot move forward in court. And that means people who live on Iowa Street are stuck with a constant reminder of what happened. I miss seeing that little one. He just, he always played over here and in, around the tree. Hey, man, buddy. Like the car hearts. Ruskowski's on a first-name basis with all the neighbors. He's also kept in touch with the fiancé of one of the pilots who died in the crash. She came to uh, Notre Dame-Oklahoma game last year, and we met for the first time in a, uh, a kind of emotional. She wanted to see what happened, uh, where it happened. Um, another officer and I brought her out here. Uh, we walked her through the scene. Um, exactly where we could tell that everything happened, explain to her, you know, what we did with her fiance, um, how he was treated. 
uh, that was very important to her and, and rightfully so. Ruskowski and many others continue to wait to find out what happened, could it have been prevented, and who's responsible. Everything speculation, conjure, uh, finger pointing, whatever it may be. Um, so from a police perspective, yeah, we want answers. Uh, and then from the personal perspective, especially with family members, yeah, we want answers. Ruskowski and others might be waiting a while. The lead NTSB investigator told me he's not even done with the preliminary investigation into this. Voice analysts are still looking into the cockpit recorder, testing still being done on the plane. And after the preliminary report, investigators will release a series of other reports until their final conclusion of what happened and why. There's still so much to be done, and it mm -hmm. is so hard to believe that it is almost a year yeah, since this happened. Less than three weeks away. Court documents, will, I mean, will any of that show anything as far as what happened? You know, nothing conclusive yet, but one of the testimony parts in there comes from one of those passengers on the plane, and he says the plane has no issues from the time it took off from Tulsa. Everything seemed fine. Right, until they started their descent into South Bend. That's when he says the plane's entire dashboard and instrument panel, panel went black. He couldn't hear what the pilots were saying, but said one of them turned to them and said, you need to get ready, prepare for landing. And so many lives affected with this crash. And not so just many. the people on the plane, yes. not just the people who lost their no, houses. A lot of people. It reaches far. Yeah. Kelly, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, failed referendum, then months of talking about.